Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we're taking a look at a whole bunch of new makeup. So we have the new House Labs blushes, we have some of the new Rare Beauty lip oils, some new products from By Terry lip liners and a new eyeliner, and we also have a concealer. It's the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer, and this is not new in the market, but it's new to me, and this was recommended by viewers. So let's go ahead and start with that. So this is the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer in the shade Mooncake, and this is going to be a fair neutral shade. You can see it is pretty neutral, and we do have a liquid type consistency here. Very thin, easy to spread out and disperse the product, and if you just use a little bit, you're really not going to get anything settling in the lines. Let's take a look at the demo here. With this particular concealer, I personally prefer a fingertip application, so I like to dab on a little bit and use my fingers. I've been testing this for about a week now, and this has a one year shelf life. It's made in Korea, has a very thin liquid consistency, and as I mentioned, it's very easy to use, and it really does stay put all day. So let's just take a quick comparison of some other shades. One of my current favorites, this is the Valentino Concealer, and this is the shade L-I-G-R-2, and this is gonna be a little bit lighter and brighter, a little bit peachier. Uh, between the two shades, I personally prefer the Valentino shade just a little bit more because it's more brightening under the eyes. However, the shade of the Kaja, because it has a little bit more of that nude tone, it does, it provides coverage a little bit more easily. So just something to note there. This is the Bobbi Brown Skinful Concealer in Porcelain. This is the mini size. You can purchase this in a mini or a larger size. And you can see that the shade here is gonna be a little bit warmer and slightly deeper than the Kaja. The Kaja is more neutral and the Bobbi Brown definitely has more yellow in it. This is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate in shade Zero and Zero Blanc. And you can see that this one is definitely going to be uh, you know, there is a little bit of yellow in there, but it's really more neutral. You're seeing more of the yellow while it's next to the Bobbi Brown, but it's a pretty neutral ivory shade. Uh, there's a touch of yellow in there, but it's really, um, you know, it's really not that warm. So those are some shade comparisons there. So overall, I have to say the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer, I think it's a really nice concealer. It's got a great price point. It's definitely something to look into at the Sephora sale if you are interested. And I will have this included in my concealer roundup, which is coming soon, uh, probably another week or two away, uh, but you know, definitely working on that. So let's go ahead and move on to the By Terry products. We're gonna start off with the new By Terry Cran Black Star Eyeliner. So this is a new limited edition shade. I do have uh, several of the other By Terry Cran Black Star Eyeliners. These came out last year. So I just wanna show you something first. This one here is shade number four, Brown Secret. All right, so look at the consistency as I'm putting that on. You have a nice creamy eyeliner consistency. It's got a great blend of waxes while not being too waxy, uh, not being dry. You know, it really stays put, doesn't really smudge out. This one here is the same, I mean, it's technically supposed to be the same formula as a Cran Black Star, shade number five, Terre Bleu. And you can see even just going on that this is gonna have a waxier consistency. This one does not stay put as well as the other eyeliners in the permanent line. And you can see that there's a little bit more sheerness in the shade here. So just something to note, this is gonna be a little bit waxier. That being said, I do think this is a really beautiful color. And let's take a look at some demos here. Now, this eyeliner, because it is a little waxy, it can skip a little bit when you're putting it on. So you're really going to want to do a few layers of this to get consistent coloration. And I think that is definitely a con for this eyeliner. Is it worth the price? You're really buying it for the particular shade. This formula itself in this shade is not great. However, I have to say I love the permanent shades of the By Terry eyeliner. You can see when I'm doing the demo, it easily smudges out. As a matter of fact, this particular shade doesn't really set all that well. So even later in the day, and you can see in this wear test here, that this smudges out when I touch it with my finger, even after several hours. So 
Uh, you know, this shade, if you are interested in trying the By Terry eyeliners and you're starting with this shade, just so you know, this is not going to be the same as the ones in the permanent line. The ones in the perma permanent line actually do set, they stay put, they last all day. You know, they are a little bit easier to work with because you don't have that skipping issue. This just feels like it has a waxier consistency to it. And because of that, you really do wanna use this more as an eyeliner. And, you know, sometimes you can use colored eyeliners, you know, smudged out all over the eyelid, kind of as eyeshadow and so forth. It doesn't work that well with this. I don't, you know, I, I've played around with that, but honestly, it looks so bad. I didn't even include it in here, but it's just, it's too, it just skips too much. So you're not gonna get that really smooth color. So you really want to focus the color in smaller areas. But I have to say, I love this particular shade. So that's really kind of a shame that the formula doesn't match up to those in the permanent line. Because this, this shade is gorgeous. So would I buy it again? Um, I would probably look for something that's similar in color instead because this just doesn't, it's just not as versatile because it never really sets and because of the skipping issue. So oh, this would have to be a pass. But let's take a look at some similar shades that I have in my collection. All right, first up, I'm going to take the By Terry again and just build that up a little bit more. So I went over that. You can see it's gonna be a little bit deeper there. And then I wanted to take a look at a few other eyeliners that I have. Now, these are the YSL Crush Liners. I actually, I just purchased another one, but this was the first one that I purchased. And this is shade number six. And one thing to note, the By Terry eyeliners, they do require a sharpener to uh, sharpen them. Whereas these YSL ones, these are the self-advancing with the little sharpener in the bottom. So something to note that's different there. But look at this color. It's very, very similar. So this is the YSL. You can see how close that is. And I have to say that this formula, it's it just holds up a bit better. So I think this is a better alternative. It's the YSL Crush Liner. It will actually set and stay put. You do, you know, it is a little bit waxier than some others in general. I think that's gonna be a part of the nature of this particular shade. But this one will set, it stays put. You can blend it out easily. I just think it's a better option. Another one, this is the Givenchy eyeliner in Cobalt, and I love this one, but these are hard to find. You can see, again, the shade's very similar, but this is slightly more electric blue. So it just has a little bit more vibrancy to it. Just like the YSL Crush Liner, you do have the self-advancing, or not self-advancing, but the twist-up style with the uh, pencil sharpener at the end. And I have to say these perform super well also. So I think, again, another great option. So those are really the only two shades that I have that are anywhere close. And I have to say, I think both the YSL and the Givenchy are better options. So similar in color, very close. And they just perform a little bit better, which is such a shame because I love the permanent formula at for by Terry. So you can, I mean, you can just see looking at it, the difference in the texture. Uh, such a shame. Now let's move on to the lip liners. So by Terry just came out with new lip liners. These are called the Hyaluronic Lip Liner. And I picked up two of the, I believe it's six shades. And I have shade number one, Sexy Nude and number four, Dare to Bear. Now, one thing that I thought was interesting about these is that unlike the eyeshadow pencils, which require a pencil sharpener, these are a twist up. So that is something to note that's different about these. Now, these have 0.3 grams of product, they're made in Italy, and they have a one year shelf life. Now, in contrast, the eyeliner pencil has a 1.2 grams of product it has a two year shelf life and it's made in Germany. So just something to note here, these are gonna be a little different. Let's take a look at some swatches. I'm gonna swatch on my other hand, which isn't necessarily gonna be as neat, but I have a little redness still from removing the swatches. So here's the eyeliner, or the lip liner rather. And this one here is number one, Sexy Nude. 
And Sexy Nude is really more of a soft peach. And consistency wise, it's a creamy lip liner. It's easy to use, but I personally, I prefer those that you have to sharpen. And this is number four, Dare to Bear, which is a really nice rose shade. So these are the two. Let's take a look at some lip swatches of these. You can see that they're really easy to, you know, actually put on. The one reason that I prefer a lip liner that you can sharpen on your own is you just have a little bit more control over the shape of the tip, how sharp you want it, how precise it can be in smaller areas. So I feel like these twist ups, even though you have the sharpener on the end, it just never gets quite as sharp, sharp, quite as precise. And it's a soft formula, so because of that, the tip will dull pretty quickly, and I just find that it's, it's gonna give you more of that softer, blurred lip look with the lip liner versus something more precise. So it depends what you're looking for. As for performance of these, these are nice. I would give them an average grade personally because I think that they're very creamy, easy to use. You've got some nice shades here. They go on well, they don't bleed or feather. They help you know prevent bleeding and feathering of lipsticks. However, if you're wearing these on their own and you're just topping them with some gloss, you don't have very long wear time with these. So that's just something to know. I And what I mean by not very long, that's like four to six hours. And you know, it just, it doesn't stay put all day like some other lip liners might. And you know, if you're just using this as a barrier for lipstick to prevent bleeding and feathering, that's not really something you might notice as much unless you have to consistently reapply your lipstick shade that you're wearing. But if you are using this as a lip color, that's something that's more noticeable. All right, for my first comparison here to Sexy Nude, this is the Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in shade one. So let's see how this compares. This is gonna be like a drier, more traditional pencil. And that's right here. You can see that color-wise, they're going to be fairly similar. The Victoria Beckham is slightly deeper in color, but they both have more of that peachy look to them. This is the Isom Lip Liner in Blushed. I have to say, I love this one. I actually have two of them um, because this is a, a one that I use a lot. So this is going to be the peachier side right here compared to this. You can see that this is gonna be a little bit more neutral. It's not quite as warm as the peach in the By Terry. And there's just a little bit more pink in there. This is the pinker side of the blush stick. You can see how creamy these are. Look at the texture of these. I find that these work better. They really do stay put all day. You can wear them as you know, just a lip color, which I do frequently. You can see that the color here is gonna be very similar. This is slightly cooler in tone than the By Terry. This is the Chanel lip liner in 154 Peachy Nude. So let's go ahead and put that one right here. You can see that this is gonna be peachier. It's a little bit lighter and brighter as well. And this is the Chanel lip liner in 164 Pivoine. This is one of my favorites. Let's put that one right here. You can see that this one is not gonna be quite as bright as the By Terry. This is going to be a bit more of a mauve shade and it's just, it has a little bit more of a mauve nude kind of look to it than a true tea rose. But let's try Chanel 172 Bois de Rose. And let's go ahead and put that one right here. Again, swatching with my left hand here is a bit of a challenge. You can see that this color is going to be more similar. It has a little bit more red in it than the By Terry. Um, but it's pretty close. I would say that the Chanel though is just gonna be a little bit deeper and has a little bit more red in it versus pink. So those are my comparisons. So overall, I'd say that the By Terry lip liners are okay, but they are not a favorite. So for me, I would actually probably just purchase a different brand. So I feel like it's been a little bit of a downer after those products. So let's move on to some lip products I've really been enjoying. Now, these were gifted to me. These are the new shades of the Jones Road lip tint. However, I love these and last year when they released the lip tint, I bought all of the shades myself. So they gifted me the new shades, but I love this formula so much that I did purchase all of the other shades myself. So this is a light, 
lip tint it has more of you know a lightweight lipstick kind of texture you can build it up i just i really like these for the summer and they're very you know thin and comfortable on the lips they feel like a lip balm so let's go ahead and take a look at the lip swatches while we talk a little bit about these now the jones road lip tints we have 1.8 grams of product there's a one year shelf life and they're made in the u.s and according to Jones Road, it says, meet our four new neutral shades. No one knows neutrals better than Bobby, especially when it comes to lips. When we first came out with the lip tint, Bobby's take on traditional lipstick, we launched with a range of bold and colorful shades. We're now adding the ultimate collection of beautiful neutrals to round out the assortment. Meet our four new neutral shades, Nude Mauve, Cocoa Rose, Mocha Rose Shimmer, and Just Pinky, what Bobby is known for. And I have to say, I really like these. They do have some application tips here. You can you know, apply as I did in the lip swatches, but they also recommend using their particular eyeliner brush as a lip liner. So I don't have that brush, but just something to note there. And then let's go ahead and take a look at some arm swatches. So on my lips right now, I'm wearing Nude Mauve. This is my favorite. This is the one I really, really like. You can see I've actually used it quite a bit already. So, and these only came up the other day. So this one here is Nude Mauve. Here is one layer, and you can see how sheer that can be. And then when you build it up, this is what you get. So these are very lightweight, comfortable on the lips. It's got kind of a thin, lip balm type texture. This particular shade I would say is, like nude mauve is a good description, but I would say it's a warm nude mauve. When I think of mauve, I think of something a little bit cooler in tone. This is more neutral. One thing to note about these lip tints is there is no fragrance in here. They actually don't have a ton of ingredients. You can actually see them on the Jones Road website, but that's one of the things I like. I don't have any fragrance or flavor or anything with these. So let's move on to Just Pinky, which is another one that I really like. Here's Just Pinky. Now this is going to be a warm pink. You can see there is like a touch of you know, kind of a touch of a warmer coral mixed in there, but this is gonna be a warm rose. And this is Cocoa Rose. This is our deepest shade. I mean, this is your quintessential brown lipstick. And there's a touch of like red in there that really makes it wearable, so it's not kind of like a dead brown. You can see that all three of these shades, they don't have shimmer, there's no glitter or sparkles in there, but they do have a sheen in there so you know you're, they're going to reflect light they're going to look very lightweight but a little bit of a sheen on the lips however our last one here does have a little bit of shimmer so this is the rose mocha shimmer and let me just show you what it looks like let me pull that up i mean look at that pull it up all the way this is all of the product i mean look at that gorgeous right <laughs> So this, when you look at it, you don't see like glitter particles or anything either. Actually, what you're gonna get is a soft metallic finish. So when you think of metallic lipstick, you know, you might think of those that are like heavily metallic. This is so subtle, you don't really notice it. I think it's really pretty. So this is actually my second favorite. So my first favorite is the Nude Mauve followed by this one. I would say these two are tied, just depends on the time of year. I think this um, Cocoa, shade, Cocoa Rose shade is one that I'd wear a lot in the fall, but since we're heading into spring right now, or we're in spring, uh, this one here, the Just Pinky, is one that I would use more at this time of year. Let's take a look at some of the previous shades that were released. So these are the two that I have that are closest to these. This is the shade Pretty. And I'm gonna put this vertically up here, but you can see that this is gonna be a cooler pink. So definitely much, much cooler than the new shades. And then we also have Nude Rose, which is my personal favorite of the previous shades. But again, you can see that this is going to have more, like it's cooler, it's got a little bit more mauve in there. You can see how the new shade here in in nude mauve, you can see nude mauve here versus nude rose. This is much more brown in comparison. So just something to note there. 
Uh, so those are my best comparisons from the previous shades, but I also wanted to take a look at the new RMS lip lights. So I have to say, I really like these lip lights. I don't love the packaging on them because I, I don't really like these like squeeze tube things, but I love the consistency and the colors. And these are gonna be a little bit creamier. They're also like a balm type texture, but they're gonna be a little bit thicker. This one here is the shade Rumor. And I wanted to see how that compared with the Rose Mocha Shimmer here and the Nude Mauve. And you can see that this is still just a little bit more mauve than either of those. Okay, this one here is the shade Crush. And let's see how that compares to just pinky, get a little bit more there, but that is gonna be pretty close. All right, let's take a look there. Yep, so I think Crush is pretty similar to just pinky. And this one here is called Rhapsody. And let's see how that compares to our deepest shade here, the Cocoa Rose. And you can see that the Bobbi Brown is gonna be a little bit cooler. You can see a little bit more mauve in here, whereas this has more of a more vibrant red base, a little warmer in tone. So that's gonna be it for my Jones Road lip tint comparisons. I have to say, I really love this formula. It's one that I really like for spring and summer because it's a little bit lightweight on the lips. It's comfortable and you don't have to worry about fragrance. That can get a little bit more overpowering in the heat. So thank you so much to Jones Road for sending these to me. Again, my favorites are gonna be the Nude Mauve and the Rose Mocha Shimmer. And overall, I think they are great everyday options. Now let's go ahead and move on to some more lip products. We're gonna take a look at the Rare Beauty lip oils. So this is the first time I've tried something from Rare Beauty. I've seen a lot of hype over them and I've been curious about trying them, but um, this was the first thing that tempted me enough to make that purchase. So I picked up two of the new lip oils. We have the shade Hope and the shade Wonder. Now, these are an interesting product because they are marketed as a lip oil, but they're also sort of a lip stain. Now, one thing to note, if you're putting this back in, see how it automatically, you know, kind of shoots back up. That's kind of a pain because I'm always, I'm not usually looking while I'm putting something, you know, while I'm closing it up. I, I have it like down lower, I'm just twisting without looking. And I frequently end up getting some of the product on my hand and staring on the gap. So just something to note there, if you're like me and you kind of do it without looking, that has a, a pretty forceful spring. This is the shade Wonder. So we have Hope and Wonder. You can see we've got our typical fuzzy doe foot applicator. This is going to be a little bit of a more, a little fuzzier applicator than some that you might see in the more, um, luxury beauty category, which typically is going to be a, a finer flocked applicator. Let me show you one. So over here we have the Dior versus the Rare Beauty. And you can see how much more fine all of the material is on the uh, Dior. So let's take a look at some lip swatches of these Rare Beauty lip oils while we talk a little bit more about the product. So these are the Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oils. We have three grams of product here. They are made in Korea and there's a six month shelf life on these. Now, when you apply these, these have a thin texture. You can feel peppermint. You can smell a little bit of peppermint in there, but it's not an overwhelming scent of peppermint. Uh, but you can feel that tingliness. You can also feel the alcohol in the formula that seems to evaporate upon contact. So you get kind of that cooling sensation as it sets on your lips. So they do feel moisturizing and comfortable on your lips. You can feel all of the oils in there. They go on very easily. And after you wear these, they will dry down to a lip stain. So you'll be left with a stain here at the end. However, the lightest shade that I picked up, Hope, I really don't see that one as a stain. That just seems to kind of wear away. But with Wonder, I can still see the color remaining later on throughout the day. So it's more of a hybrid between a lip oil and a lip stain. And actually the product that it makes me think of the most are the Dior lip tints. So we're gonna look at those in a minute as well. Now, I do wanna note that this product, it does have, it has a fragrance, it's, it's not noticeable really, you know, it, it's, it's, the fragrance itself is not an issue. However, 
there's a taste to this product. So if you lick your lips anytime while you have this product on, even hours later, you're gonna notice it. I have I'm just not a fan of having like any sort of flavor on my lips. I try not to lick my lips while I have lip products on, but let's face it, we all know that that's gonna happen, especially if you're eating with lip products on and so forth. So for me, the, the taste that I get from that is a negative. Uh, it's definitely not the worst tasting that I've ever tasted or anything, but you know, it tastes a little like makeup, you know, you have a little bit of that, like, mm, what was that? So that's a con for me. Overall, I have to say that I think this product is at a great price point. It's a great way to try out different shades and things like that. It's got a nice look to your lips when you're wearing it, but I personally just don't love them. And uh, I'm not sure, you know, if that's because I'm more used to wearing some of the products like Clay de Poe and so forth, but they're just not a favorite for mine, for me. However, I do see, you know, this would be something like great to pick up, like if you're on vacation and you need like a, a lip color because you forgot something or you're looking for, you know, a specific shade, but you don't want to spend a lot on something, you know, with a higher price point this would be a good option in that case. But for me, this is gonna be it for me. I'm not adding to my collection of these lip oils. Now let's take a look at the Dior Attic Lip Tints as well. So these are the Dior Attic Lip Tints. I have to say these remind me of the uh, lip oils from Rare Beauty because of the way they feel on the lips. These can be left with a stain on your lips as well. However, these are more of a water-based product. So they're gonna be a little bit lighter. You can build them up. But when you're putting them on, that's the type of texture, that's the type of evaporative feeling that you get when you put on the Rare Beauty lip oils. So this shade that I just swatched here is number 251, which is called Natural Peach. And you can see it's gonna be peachier and a little bit brighter than Hope. And overall, I have to say, the Dior Attic Lip Tints, you know, these will leave you with a stain on your lips as well. However, it's, if you like go and get them wet or you're eating something with maybe some oils or something, that comes right off. Whereas the Lip Beauty will stay and last longer. So they're gonna be a little bit more long wearing on your lips than the Dior Attic Lip Tints. This is shade 351 Natural Nude. And I just wanted to see how this one compared here to Wonder, but you can see that Wonder is gonna be a little bit cooler, has a little bit more plum in there, whereas this Natural Nude is really more of a, more of a medium toned carnation pink, a little bit more vibrant. You know, it's a brighter pink than a typical carnation, but that level of balance between the warm and the cool. Uh, kind of matches. So one more shade to look at. This is 491 Natural Rosewood. And yeah, that's gonna be much deeper. So overall, those are my thoughts on the Rare Beauty Lip Oils. I think they're a great product if you are looking to try something new and you don't wanna break the bank. But for me, I prefer other brands that I already have, so I'm not gonna continue with them. And the taste for me is really kind of a deal breaker on there. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to some blushes. I picked up three of the new House Labs blushes. So House Labs, this is Lady Gaga's line and uh, this is going to be plastic packaging here. You can see you've got that chrome finish. You have a mirror inside. There is a little bit of, you know, uh, one of the little tape things that you can use to pull off the mirror. If I could ever pick this one off. All right, there you go. So they do have that. And then this is what it looks like. I've actually used this one probably like four times now. And you can see you really need the smallest amount of product at all on this. So this is actually a very sizable product. Uh, you get a good bang for your buck here. You have a two year shelf life on these. You have 11 grams of product. I mean, that's gigantic. And they're made in Italy. So powder product here, you have more of that traditional powder kind of texture. Let's go ahead, we're gonna put these down here. And this one here is Hibiscus Haze. So this is the most natural looking one that I picked up. Let me go ahead and buff a little bit of that out for you right here. And you can see these are very pigmented. So if you're trying to go in, uh, I would recommend going in with 
a very tiny amount of product and building up from there you really if you have fair skin like me you're not going to need to build <laughs> so uh it's definitely something to be cautious with i find that tapping these on padding is a little bit easier for application and this one here is dragon fruit days which is kind of your like vibrant you know kind of kind of like a hot pink with a little bit of purple in there so there's a little bit if you've seen dragon fruit i mean this is a pretty apt description and yeah it's pretty vibrant very electric pink but there's a little bit of that blue base in there which i think balances it out a little bit and then the last one i picked up this is watermelon bliss i actually have that on right now but i have i have a little foundation left over from my foundation brush pat it on top i'll show you that in a minute but you can see that this is a really nice soft strawberry red actually and you've got you know some warmth but you've got a little bit of coolness but it's kind of like a warm neutral red and that's watermelon bliss so let's take a look at some cheek demos here now with these cheek demos i use the sonya g cheek pro brush for all of them i have a couple of the brushes so everything was clean in between and on one side i did a lighter application and on the other side i built that up so you can really see how deep you can get these shades and you can see how little product you need so you really just want to pat on a little bit of this if you swirl it or swipe it you know you might end up with a little bit more pigmentation areas that you don't want so as for these blushes if you're interested in these blushes and they're just a little bit too bright for you you're having a hard time putting them on mix them with a little bit of loose powder and you can you know lighten that up a little bit pretty easily another thing that i did today as i mentioned i took my foundation brush that i use and i just pat it over the blush to help blend that now i do want to show you this demo here as well where i used the Kyoto premium fan brush to apply hibiscus haze not hibiscus Haze, I'm sorry, that was Watermelon Bliss. And I wanted to see how something light and fluffier would do to disperse the color a little bit. But you can see that you really end up with uneven pigmentation in that way. You can actually see on this close up that you have little pigmentation dots of the color. So it just doesn't blend as smoothly there. To really get a smooth blend with this, you wanna buff this into the cheek or pat it in very gently. Um, I think that's really going to be the best for this. So because it is such a highly pigmented blush, you know, I definitely recommend using as little as possible and trying to buff that into the skin. And that will give you the best look in my opinion. So overall, do I recommend these? I think these are actually a really fun blush. I think they are, it's a great way to get some bright colors and so forth. Is it gonna be my favorite blush formula? It's not, but I do think it's a good blush and I love the bright colors for summer. I think they're fun to play with. They're massive, so you get a ton of product. And um, so overall, I would have to say that, yes, I do recommend the House Labs blushes. I think they are very, they're, they're really a nice product, especially for this price point. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons of some of these blushes. Now, I have to say right off the bat, this bright one here, the Dragon Fruit Days, that one made me think of one of the Wayne Goss blush duos. I passed that one on, so I don't have that any longer, but it does remind me of that. Formula wise, um, I would have to say the Pat McGrath shades, these are going to be a little bit more powdery. They're not quite as, they're just a little bit dustier than the uh, House Labs, but they do kind of remind me a little bit of it. So this one here is Pat McGrath in Electric Bloom, and you can see that it's going to be a little bit warmer than the Watermelon Bliss. Now, having the Pat McGrath blushes be a little bit dustier, I do find that they're a little bit easier to smooth into the skin uh, than the House Labs. So this one here is the shade Cherish. That's going to be a brighter pink than Hibiscus Haze. All right, this one here is Divine Rose. So let's see how that one compares. So just squeeze that up there. You can see it's a little bit lighter. It uh, doesn't have quite as much pink but it's pretty close. So I think that's that's a good alternative to Hibiscus Haze. And I really just don't have too many bright blushes, but this is Surat Subpompane. And I wanted to compare this one with Dragon Fruit Days. This is 
Oh, you know, it's closer than I thought. I thought it'd be a little bit more pink, but no, look how close that is. There's a little bit more purple in the house labs, but super, super close. And then this is Surat Classique, which is more like your true red here. Let's put that there. Wow, that's super close as well. So I would say that the Surat is ever so slightly cooler. Um, really close though. So that is it for all of the new items today. I know we covered a lot. Let's just do a quick review of everything that we went over today. First up, we start with the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer. I have the shade Mooncake, and to say I really like this concealer, I think it's easy to use, doesn't break the bank, and um, so far, after a week's of about a week of use, uh, it's working out really well. So I would say that this is a yes. I would give this concealer um, probably an, an A. Moving on to the By Terry Cran Black Star in 5 Terrible. This doesn't compare to their permanent line pencils, which are not quite as waxy. The color for this is fantastic, but the formula is not. So overall, I would have to give this one a D because unfortunately the formula just doesn't outweigh the shade when there are some similar shades in better formulas, such as the Givenchy and the YSL Crush Liner. Moving on to the lip liners from By Terry, and I personally don't really love the twist up style for a lip liner. I think the shades are nice. I think the consistency is nice, easy to use. They have average wear time. I would give this um, probably a B minus because it's pretty close to average, but it's a, the consistency is so creamy and easy to use as slightly above average, average being a C. So, I would give these a B minus. Moving on to the Jones Road Lip Tints. I think these are really nice, easy to use. You know, they meet all of the claims and everything that they discuss on the Jones Road website. So there, there's no like hidden surprises with these. So I would give these an A. They are exactly what they say they're gonna be. I love the fact that there's no fragrance in these. They're comfortable, easy to use. They're a lip tint, so you're not looking at all day wear with these, but I really love the new shades, particularly the new Nude Mauve here and the Rose Mocha Shimmer. So I would have to say that I would give these an A and they were gifted. So just disclosure there. And then moving on to the Rare Beauty, I would give these a C. And I know I'm probably in the minority here. I would give them a higher grade if it weren't for the taste, but I really, really dislike having any sort of taste in my lip products. And I am... Um, I I just don't love them. So overall, I think they have a nice consistency. They've got a great color range. They're comfortable on the lips, but they are kind of a mix of a lip oil and a lip stain, which eh, it's okay, but it's, it's not my favorite. I would prefer to kind of just stick in one lane there. And um, yeah, overall, between the two shades I picked up, Hope is very light. That one doesn't really leave much of a stain. Wonder will leave a stain. That's my choice between the two shades I picked up. But um, to me, they're just, they're average. So I would give those a C. And then moving on to the House Labs blushes, I would give these a B. So I think they are a really nice blush. You're getting a great amount of product for your price. You've got some really fun, bright colors to play with. Uh, the formula is just a little bit more... It's not quite as smooth and blendable as some of the brighter shades I compared it to, like the Surat shade there or the Pat McGrath. And I think that's because this feels more like pure pigment versus a pigmented powder. So that's kind of the difference there between those, which just makes this a little bit harder to blend out if you have fair skin. So just something to note, they look beautiful underneath uh, like a powder or a foundation to kind of help blur that a little bit. And if you can buff them in, all the better. So overall, I'd give these a B because they really have some great qualities, but they're just not the easiest to use as some other products that I have. So that sums up everything from today. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know if you've tried any of these products and what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day.